you're probably going to want to like cover yourself in this, run down the high street, throw it at people, bathe in it, live in it. Um, I, uh, yeah, I love this. In this video, we're going to show you how you can use Rockbox to make the best garlic naans. They're as good, if not better, than your local curry house. So let's get started. In our quest to make garlic naan as good as the curry house, we have tried lots of different dough recipes, lots of different ingredients, but we think we've nailed it, we think we've got it right, and we're going to show you how you can do it at home. So we're going to start with flour. We've got 450 grams of flour. That was loud. We're using strong white bread flour, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Our naan dough is an enriched dough, which basically means it's got dairy in it, and the fat in that dairy can sometimes inhibit gluten development. So if we were to use plain flour or something like that, we might struggle to get the same sort of texture. To that, we're going to add 15 grams of fine sea salt, and then we can get this back on the mixer. So that's our dry ingredients. We've got our bread flour, we've got our salt, and now our wet ingredients. So here I have 225 ml of full fat milk, and I've just pinged that in the microwave till it's about 50 degrees. I'm going to add to that 8 grams of golden caster sugar and 150 grams of full fat yogurt. So we've added our yogurt fridge cold, so that's going to pull the temperature of the milk straight down to about 30 degrees. And then we're going to add to that two grams of yeast. If you add your yogurt and this is still kind of at 35, 40 degrees, just wait a minute, just let it cool down. You could always, uh, you know, make something to go with it. Perhaps uh, tandoori lamb necks, which are available on this very YouTube channel. Right, so that's all mixed together. And then we're going to add the wet to the dry, as we do with most doughs. Once you've got your liquid in, you'll find that most of the flour will kind of sit at the side. So just use your dough scraper, turn the mixer off, and just kind of push that flour in. Now, a lot of naan recipes call for all of the raising agents in the world. The yeast, baking powder, baking soda. We are just going with two grams of yeast, and we're going to give this a long ferment. We're going to leave this overnight for 24 hours to ferment, just like we do with pizza dough. And that is going to give us kind of a really good depth of flavor and give us that soft kind of crumb structure that you see in the naan breads that you get from the curry house. So we've mixed that for about four minutes and it's, it's quite tacky, it's quite sticky still. We're just gonna leave it to rest for 10 minutes before we bring it back together. It gives the gluten a chance to relax and it's just gonna make the dough a bit smoother, a bit easier to work with. Our dough's been resting for 10 minutes. So now we're just gonna bring it back together. So dough scraper again, just put it away from the sides and you can just put it on low speed for a minute, about a minute, just to kind of bring it back together, just to exercise that gluten again. Get yourself a tub or Tupperware, or something, something. If it can be reasonably large, this is seven liters, that's quite helpful. Just gives us enough room for everything to happen that's gonna happen there during the fermentation. Um, but equally, you know, you could put it in an ice cream tub or in a bowl, whatever you want. So I've put a little bit of oil in here, give it a little rub round, just give it a little work in here so it gets covered in the oil. It'll just make it a bit easier for you to then kind of shape it up. Cool, so we're gonna cover it with a lid or cling film. If you don't have a lid that fits your Tupperware tub, I know that happens sometimes, that's just life. Who knows where the lids go? And we're gonna leave this at room temperature for between 16 and 24 hours. Then we can make it into naan. While our dough is resting and fermenting and magical science stuff is happening that none of us really understand, it's a mystery. We're gonna move on and make some garlic butter. Uh, naan breads are brushed with ghee. It's basically clarified butter that is just cooked down a bit further so we lose all the water. So you just end up with fat. Fat is good, fat is flavor. We're gonna go somewhere kind of in between clarified butter and nut brown butter. Pan on the heat and here we've got 250 grams of unsalted butter. We're just gonna pop that straight into the pan and let it start melting. Once the butter is melted, we'll start to see the kind of white milk solids come to the top. We're gonna to take those off with a spoon. So while it's doing that, we can get everything else prepared so we can chop our parsley. We're gonna end up with about three tablespoons of parsley, flat leaf parsley, starting to move towards what's called burn noisette, which means nut brown butter, kind of burnt butter, and you'll smell it. In the meantime, let me tell you about the largest naan that was ever made in Canada. It was 32 kilos, and it measured 16 feet by four feet. Say what? Nanigdote. It's not a, that's not an anecdote, because you weren't involved in it. Oh. An anecdote is a story of your life. Okay. Let me tell you about when I lived in Canada and I made the largest naan bread ever. It was 32 kilos and it measured 16 feet by four feet. Say what? Smells lush. This bit's gonna scare you, but it's fine because we're gonna chuck in a tablespoon of light soy sauce and this thing's gonna go mental. Oh, now it smells so good though. It smells so good from the soy. 
Okay, so into this, we are gonna grate in our half a bulb of garlic. We don't wanna put this in on the hob while the butter's still in the pan, like cooking, because it will just burn the garlic too much. We wanna let it cool a little bit before you put the parsley in, otherwise the parsley's gonna go this really horrible kind of dull brown. We wanna try and keep a little bit of green in there as much as we can. And you can make this, if you wanted to, you can make the butter kind of, you know, a week before, two weeks before. This will keep for quite a long time in the fridge, kind of up to three months. We're gonna set this to one side because our dough is nearly ready to open into naans. The dough has been sitting there at room temperature for about 18 hours, this is, and your window's kind of 16 to 24, and it will end up looking like this. So there is our dough. And you remember how tacky it was earlier when we kind of just, when we were mixing it and we put it into the bowl? Now, a lot less tacky. We're gonna divide this into 160 gram pieces. So close. It's 159. Oh, come on. So this recipe is gonna make you five naans at 160 grams each with a little bit left over to throw in the bin or stick up a poster with. And then we're gonna shape these into balls, much like we do for pizza. You'll probably find you won't need any flour on your bench. If you do find your hands are sticking or the dough sticking, whatever, you can put some flour down, that's no problem. We're gonna flour our tray here that we're gonna put the dough into. Did I mention I went to Canada once and made the largest naan? I'm gonna give them another little dusting of flour just over the top. And then these guys are now ready to sit at room temperature for about two hours. We just need that gluten to relax so we can stretch them into our lovely naan shape. Then we're ready to cook them. Now it's time to finally make some fantastic garlic naans in Rockbox. Our dough has kind of risen a little bit. Just dust your bench with a little bit of flour. Shape-wise, when we open our naans, it's kind of up to you. You can, do, you can go for the kind of traditional teardrop. What you want to do is migrate the air, similar to when we open a, a Neapolitan pizza. So use your fingers and just kind of start pushing. You'll see these air bubbles appear. Flip it over, do the same again. And what I like to do is keep these fingers at one end and then use these fingers to push the dough outwards. Although we're working in a similar way as we would with Neapolitan pizza, we don't want to trap that air in the crust. So I'm kind of moving the air towards the crust, but really all I'm doing is just not knocking any air out of the dough itself. It's ready to go in the oven. Traditionally, these guys are cooked in tandoors, massive tandoors. And what they'll do is they get a kind of contraption that looks a bit like a mop. And it's a stick with loads of wet towels around the outside. You put the naan over the wet, damp towels, hold it on the side of the tandoor, wait for it to stick, come out, let it cook. Easy. So we have designed a massive stick covered in towels for Rockbox, but I left it at home. So today we're not gonna use that. So grab yourself your placement peel little dusting with flour and just pop the naan bread on. I'm just going to give it a little spray with some water just on top. Try not to get it on the peel, just get it on the naan itself. So this is going to recreate that traditional cooking method, that big stick with all the towels on the end. Rockbox itself is preheated, so it's been on for about 40 minutes or so and we've turned the flame down to the lowest setting and similar to a lot of recipes we don't want that fierce heat that we find at the back of the oven. So we're going to cook this guy in the front third of the oven. So a little shake, get yourself over to the oven. And straight into that front third of the oven. After about a minute, you're gonna to wanna to rotate the naan 180 degrees. You can see we've turned it round. We're getting some of that spotting that we associate with Neapolitan pizza. And the base should be cooking and looking just like the naans that you get in the curry house. Those kind of black spots around it, slightly charred looking bits. Our total bake time for these naans is gonna vary slightly depending on how long they've been at room temperature, but you're gonna be somewhere between two and four minutes. I've had them out in kind of two and a half minutes, I've had them out in three and a half minutes, had them out in four and a half, but somewhere around that mark is gonna be you. Okay, so that was about three and a half minutes, and you can see he's quite crispy. He's quite crispy, and you're thinking, that's not like the curry house. You lied, you're a liar. Man of deceit. Well, au contraire, au contraire, my friend. Because now, the magic happens. Yeah. So our lovely soy garlic butter is now gonna get brushed all over. And flip it over, same the other side. So you've got that lovely charring on the base there. And then you wanna leave him. We're gonna leave him to kind of sit there with the butter for about two minutes. We've put three naan breads here. The ones that have been brushed early doors, you can see they have gone floppy and soft and delicious and just like the ones from the curry house. This one has just come out, still quite crispy. So you need to leave it two minutes or so. And then if we rip him open, have a look inside, you will see beautiful, soft, soft, doughy texture. 
Mop up some more of the ghee, garlic, whatever we want to call it. You don't have to use the ghee that we've shown you. You can make the dough, top it with what you want, keep it plain, cut it open, fill it with breakfast, sausage, bacon, eggs, beans, black pudding, tomato, mushrooms, all that. Chuck it inside an arm bread because this dough is one of the best things you will make this week. Go and try it. Don't forget to go to gosney.com Loads of other inspiration, loads of other recipes, some amazing guest chefs making the most amazing food I've ever seen. Get on board. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Lots of exciting stuff coming up. Percy, are you rolling? Yes, he's rolling. Mm, fat. Mm, fat. Hook's a good film, isn't it? Probably my favourite Spielberg film, you know, controversially. Let me know what yours is in the comments, or if not, your favourite uh, film that features a character called Rufio.